Good morning, good, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone, wherever and whenever you are tuning in from. Thank you all for joining or viewing uh, this webinar at a later date. I am Eric Smith, Manager of Monitoring, Evaluation and Learning at Cody, and it's my pleasure to lead this webinar alongside two Global Change Leader Program alumna, Nina Samara and Katharina Kravchuk. Today, we're going to discuss a case study on the Global Change Leaders Program, which Nina, Katarina, and I conducted between September 2018 and January 2019. The study was in support of final reporting to Global Affairs Canada, but wasn't just about donor reporting. It was about learning from the program, improving our own practice, supporting women's leadership, and creating a space for reflection by graduates, mentors, and resource people affiliated with the program. Today, Nina, Katarina, and I will lead the webinar, but Eileen Alma, our Director of Women in, Indi in Indigenous Programming, and Naima Chowdhury, Women's Leadership and Gender Specialist, will also be jumping in during sections. First off, Eileen will provide a welcome and brief introduction to Women's and Indigenous Programming here at Cody, before I break back in to provide a brief overview of what we will be covering today. Please take it away, Eileen. Well, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're located. And it's great to see some familiar names, um, and hopefully I'll see some faces sometime in the middle of the of the um, of the presentation and of the webinar. Um, Katarina, Mariam, Maureen, Nargiza, Nicole. Um, I saw others. Denise, wonderful to have you here today. Um, and as as Eric said, we are going to talk a little bit about the Global Change Leaders Program which um, is, a, is, I think, the, one of the most special programs that Cody has ever offered. And yes, I'm a little biased, but uh, I really do believe it's true. And I think that the, um, the huge demand that we get for the Global Change Leaders Program, I think, is a solid indication of, of why it is so special. Um, some years we get more than 1,200 applications for this program and usually only have about 20 spaces. So. There's clearly something something about it that um, is uh, is needed by women around the world, and and that's what's exciting for us um, is to see how we can best support all of you, um, no matter whether you're in Canada or Nigeria or Madagascar or the Ukraine, Pakistan. Um, we're here to to work with you. Um, I just will say a couple things. One is that this is a, a flagship program of the International Center for Women's Leadership here at Cody Institute. And it's been running since 2011, but it's not our first endeavor uh, in supporting women's leadership. In fact, at Cody, women's leadership has been a priority for quite a long time. And we've been offering a shorter women's leadership course for at least two decades now um, with a variety of great facilitators, both past and present. So, you know, our commitment continues, but the, the special thing about the Global Change Leaders Program and also our Indigenous Women's Leadership Program is that they're a longer program that also has mentorship built in and time to reflect back in terms of the work that you do in your community. And that, I think, is the key difference and the niche that we have here at the Cody is understanding that for us, the course doesn't end when we give you a certificate but rather we see you as part of a, a Cody family. Um, we see that you need support um, in your leadership journeys uh, throughout your life and throughout different points in your careers. And that's what makes it um, all the more special for us to, to find ways that we can continue to, to build that collaboration with you. So this study, um, Eric and Nina and Katarina um, have undertaken is really um, to, uh, an opportunity for us to get a better sense of A, how we can best support you with the kinds of programming content that you need, and B, to really see how you are then taking that learning and actually putting it into practice um, in your communities. So we look forward to you hearing more. And just a shout out to all of you to continue to send us your stories of what you're doing as leaders and the kind of leadership impact you're having. And you know we're always happy to hear um, of what you're what you're up to, and I encourage you to either email any of us on the team, or to email us at womenlead at stfx.ca to share your stories. Thanks, Eric. I'll turn right over to you. 
Thanks, Eileen. You've touched on a number of the elements that made this study so interesting for Katarina, Nina, and I. And it was a great opportunity to dive, to dive more deeply into one of Cody's programs and it turned out to be quite complementary to last year's Learning from Stories of Change study, which provided an overview of all of Cody's programs but didn't dive deeply into any one of them. Uh, today, this will be a bit of a cross between a webinar and a focus group, so we have built-in opportunities for discussion throughout. Why are we trying to open it up in this way? Well, we want, to we want to report back to graduates, mentors, and program staff who contributed their thoughts and time to provide information, answer surveys, and participate in focus groups. This is aligned with the recommendations of the study, which encouraged continuing to create spaces for ongoing reflection and for graduates to come together to encourage further learning and future collaboration. We're going to skip introductions as we are a little pressed for time, but don't worry, there'll be space to say hi. In terms of overall flow, we will start with looking at the origins of the GCL program. Um, Naima Chowdhury, the current lead facilitator for the program, will then share her reflections on where GCL is now and where it's going. I'll then jump back in to explain the nuts and bolts of the study, the why, the how, and who, and the methods used. Nina Samara, who was part of the leadership team for the study, will cover some of the individual and personal impacts of the GCL program on its alumna. These changes really set the stage for the outcomes in community and organizational leadership that happen after alumna finish the program. Katarina will cover that topic, as well as some of the challenges, as well as the unique intergenerational mentoring component of the program. We'll then cover some of the overall results, its relationship to Cody's theory of change, and some of the recommendations before opening the floor back up. After each section, we will also open the floor up to you for your reflections and thoughts. So uh, the Global Change Leader Program uh, has been around for seven cohorts of graduates now. So it started in about, was it 20, 2012? Um, and it came out of a recognition that there was a need for greater involvement for women in leadership roles across international development organizations and sectors. And uh, G the GCL program was Cody's response to this. The first year consisted of a 20-week commitment to leadership training. There's two weeks of online preparatory work, nine weeks spent in Canada, eight weeks in a third country, and a final week in Canada. The participants received specialty communications training and mentorship by an established woman leader over the program. In the international placement, the women could immerse themselves and apply the skills that they had learned. Funding was only available in the first year for this model, it was a pilot year, and unfortunately there were challenges in securing additional funding for such a high cost program. Um, furthermore, logistics and resources required to secure international placements were very high. Challenges included securing visas, health insurance and other liabilities, not to mention the difficulty of emerging or, or women leaders leaving their lives, families, professional responsibilities for a full 20 weeks. So given these concerns, the program was scaled back. Uh, a new model put the focus on leadership action plans that could be enacted back at home under the mentorship of an established woman leader. So those are, those are the origins of the GCL program. And I'm going to pass it over to Nana Chowdhury to speak a little bit about the current focus. Thank you very much, uh, Eric, and uh, welcome everybody. Um, and thanks, uh, special thanks to Nina and Katrina too. Uh, I would like to say something about uh, how GCL is uh, uh, as an ongoing program, how we see GCL. Um, it's, it's more focusing on the feminist transformative process. So uh, with time, what we are trying to do that feminism, uh, we are bringing feminism as the core discussion of GCL and where we are um, developing the critical lens um, uh, to the participant that they can see the uh, development uh, practices um, critically and also think uh, with that that what uh, their uh, way of uh, uh, work could be so it's building the agency in them that uh, who is the person how is the person will act for feminism uh, women's uh, advancement and the development for um, all particularly community as a whole uh, with a holistic approach so there we uh, try to do that they can challenge the power dynamics 
uh, they can see the um, how the power um, are the power is practiced in the community and for development. Uh, so it's a kind of harmonization uh, for, within the development uh, initiative that the participants are able to see and think and work through. So uh, the other thing that we try to do is uh, building connection with people, who the people around uh, the person, uh, the, the leaders, the uh, participants who is in the class, who is the people, who are the people around her? Is her her relation, her community, how the relation would be, and how she can bring uh, her ideas and thoughts and can share with uh, with the people around her, and then uh, how um, the relations, the community, and the participants can influence the structure, the system for the better uh, betterment of the people and changes in the community. Then the other thing that we uh, try to do is uh, more like connecting women, connecting people and connecting intersections. So intersection as part of the feminism is a major discussion uh, in the class. Um, each and every way we try to build uh, the discussion and critical analysis of uh, inclusion and, and, and of the intersection. And uh, so, uh, the participants are able to see the linkage and uh, the, um, uh, the diversity and people's ability in each and every part of the of the topics that we discuss in the class and also analyze the system that where the intersections can um, contribute and also addressed um, in a, a broader um, sense. And uh, uh, what we try to do in the class that relations are very important but how the relations can take the responsibility of development it's not only to make the connection it's also taking the responsibility for uh, overall community development overall all goal of development how they can uh, make sure that each and every relation can work best for the uh, development and uh, with all this discussion, uh, we bring the um, aspects of global and local connections, uh, mostly that how she see her community and how her community work uh, are influenced by uh, positively or challenged by the global dimension. So she can relate uh, uh, what would be her way of uh, thinking uh, to make sure that community and herself are well aware and uh, well equipped uh, to address the local and global challenges and move forward. So that sort of strength and empowerment along with the relation and structure, we try to make sure that she, go, she can see her uh, path very clearly. Um, uh, it's uh, the whole program, we bring the discussion of women's movement that um, the participants is not an individual, but as a, um, as a very important part of women movement and where she can contribute uh, to write the women's history um, and support the women's movement in, in diverse way. So this is the whole um, sort of holistic approach of feminism that we are bringing in the class discussion. So, that's a little bit of background on the GCL origins and the uh, purpose of the program and how it operates. Um, this study, uh, we wanted to, well, we had some, seven cohorts of the GCL, uh, so seven groups of alumni, and it was time to do a larger study of the GCL program and capture uh, lessons learned and look at some of the longer term outcomes of the program. Uh, we wanted explicitly to take a feminist approach, recognizing that the process would be as important as the outcomes, and do holistic reporting that facilitates telling, telling stories and embracing complexity. Um, we also wanted to create space for GCL alumna to participate as part of the research team. So we did a call to graduates. Uh, two were selected, one from 2014, uh, Katarina Kravchuk, who's in the webinar now, and uh, Nina Samara, who has uh, just joined the webinar, and they'll both be uh, they'll both be helping me out with the presentation. Um, this was in line with the feminist methodology as well. It was really shared leadership and practice. 
Uh, we worked quite closely together as a team from uh, about October of 2018 through till well now when they're helping helping out with the presentation. Um, up on the screen, you can see some of the key questions and methods that we used, and this included outcome surveys uh, that we distribute six to eight months after graduation. We then did a graduate tracer study in December, and we used focus groups to facilitate a reflection and coll collective analysis of the findings. Um, here you can see the, uh, the, some of the responses that we got. So there were 134 graduates of the program, and we received 63 responses, so about a 47% 47, 47 response rate, which is quite high for, uh, for a graduate tracer study. We had three online focus group discussions with 15 participants from around the world, and we also had 10 uh, interviews with, well, we had interviews and conversations with 10 key informants, and this included um, past and present Cody staff, mentors, and resource people who are affiliated with the program. And uh, it was really important to get their feedback, um, all of that feedback from all those folks to get a, a really full picture of the GC program and its outcome, outcomes. Um, I'm going to pause here for a moment and just see if anyone participating has any questions so far. You Okay, sounds like we're good to go. Uh, I'm going to, Nina, are you there? Okay. So we, one of the things that we considered when we were developing the Tracer study was the four leadership, the, the leadership diamond of Srilatla Batliwala. So the leadership diamond is a guide for her, is a guide that she gave, you know, her leaders in terms of understanding power, um, within the framework of feminist leadership. So in the in the feminist um, diamond, leadership diamond, you would see, for example, um, that that area on self-perception. So it's about the agency that we have as individuals, the innermost um, the innermost power that we we find in ourselves. The other one is about politics and purpose. Um, Another is about principles and values. And then the fourth has to do with practices and responsibilities. And the reason why she came up with all these, um, these four areas, it's because she recognized that even among ourselves as individuals, we can contradict ourselves. So we may have, um, we may follow a certain principle, but we, but our practices do other um, do otherwise or suggest otherwise because of certain roles and responsibilities and certain identities that we have as as individuals. So we considered this when we were looking at how GCL has had an impact on our lives as individuals. So we were looking at ourselves. We looked at our purpose, our politics our practices and principles and values. So based on the Tracer survey, it says here that, or it shows here that the GCL as a course, and as well as the relationships which were built around it, um, it has had an impact the most on ourselves as individuals, the inner power. And then it was followed, it was followed by, by practices and later purpose, politics, principles, and values. The reason why it seems that principles and values as well as purpose and politics, you know, they came towards the end, third and fourth place. It's possible that it's because most of us who came to GCL, we already, many of us came there as feminists already. So we knew already our values and, and we somehow recognized that you know, these values are shared among all of us in the classroom. But a lot of us said that it has had an impact on our personal growth precisely because of the approaches, the space that was created for us. So one one mentor even described it as a container. It was a self, it was a safe space where we were able to express our thoughts, emotions, and other perspectives which 
you know, it would have been, which would have been difficult for us to express in other spaces, including our work. Um, and then there's a high, a high rating for purpose and for practices, sorry. It's also because of the approaches which were, which were taught in, in the classroom. And maybe I will pause for a while just to, just to get any, any reaction. Uh, to the findings of the study on the feminine on feminist leadership or its impact impact to us as individuals looks like there's none or <laughs> so another another set of questions which we asked um, had to do with the relevance of GCL to us as individuals and by individuals we were we are we are also thinking of ourselves as activists, as, um, you know, our roles as, as mothers and, and, and other roles and, and responsibilities that we have. So we checked, we checked the relevance of GCL to our careers, our roles in the organizations, and also our communities, aside from, as I've said, as, as individuals. So we asked how people feel about the content of the course, the approaches, which were, which were also taught. So for example, examples of approaches include the circle that we have every morning when we check in. And sometimes we also do the circle when we check out towards the end of the class and also the other exercises and, and the way the courses had been facilitated. And then another, another question had to do with the classmates, the relationships that we built um, with each other as, law, as well as our mentors and other facilitators, the logistics behind the class, because we, we also noted that it takes a lot of effort to put together 20 to 25 women in one, in one batch and house them, fly them to Canada and, and put them in one room. The environment, we also considered the conduciveness of of Saint effects of Antigonish in terms of learning, and then the relevance of having a certificate based on the reputation of Cody International Institute and Saint effects So um, in this part of the discussion, it appears that content remains quite, or it remains the most relevant among the things that, that we could find in the in the course, followed by approaches. Um, although, although it was also recognized that you know the relationships that 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 were built in the course, they are somehow in you know, a lifelong relationships. But the approaches, some of some of the some of the respondents felt that the approaches contributed in making GCL a safe space. And it also facilitated learning and sharing. And given that it's a safe space, it also allowed people to be free and free to express themselves without any fear of judgment. And then in terms of the content, the number one um, component for, for most graduates, or, or yeah, the, num the, the most relevant component for most graduates. Um, part of it, it's because there are some exciting stuff which were which were taught in, in in the classroom so if we go to the next slide um, we go to the word cloud so when we ask for example which which modules appealed to to them the most many of them cited abcd approach particularly the leaky bucket and and the exercises under that module and then some hard skills, for example, public speaking, the communications workshop. And then there's also a big portion of the, of the respondents who cited women's leadership, which according to, to Nancy Lee, one of the, one of the mentors, um, it's also good that this was recognized because this is a subject that is difficult to teach, difficult to, to discuss even in a, in a, even within a conducive conversation, because it's so broad and it's about imparting a certain a certain a certain frame of 
of looking at the world. So it's so so that was the challenge in women's leadership. And then others also cited project management, another hard skill. And then of course, the approaches around group facilitation, dealing with power dynamics, and others also appreciated the discussion around situational leadership, um, which, you know, that module about leadership styles and approaches. So maybe I can pause here again just to just to see if there are any any thoughts about about the word cloud. I may uh, jump in for for a moment if that's okay, Nina. Yeah. Um, I want to touch on uh, the public speaking. One of the interesting findings from the study to me was that uh, some of the investments made in in and sorry if I'm jumping ahead uh, of you, Nina, but some of the investments made in what are what are commonly assumed to be basic communication skills, like speaking and writing, um, was actually really important, um, even though that investment might at times be difficult to justify. Um, and that's because those kinds of investment in uh, public speaking, writing, communications helped amplify people's voices and also help amplify the voices of others. True. I think aside from from the ABCD approach, because the ABCD approach, it's one of those um, Cody products. <laughs> so so it's something. It's a brand of Cody. But uh, but for public speaking, it's also something that um, the students appreciate because it's a practical skill that is often overlooked. Whenever, whenever we do skills building as activists, or, or even in our in our own organizations, um, so we so we often we often looked at project management things like that, but but we haven't, but we haven't um, really really took a second we, we haven't taken a second look on the more basic skills like public speaking or even content development. Um, I think in the first few years of, of GCL, there's, there's a lot of investment on public speaking because, um, if I'm not mistaken, there were also events which happened outside the classroom where students were really, were really asked to deliver those speeches that they prepared inside the classroom. But in the later years, I believe this has continued although the although most of the most of the outputs had to do with uh had to do with our presentations towards the end of the course so thanks nina um now i'm going to pass uh the slides over to katarina who's going to speak a little bit about the commu leadership community and organizational plans as well as uh, some of the challenges that people experienced and the mentorship components of global change leaders. Katerina, are you all set? Uh, thank you, Eric and uh, Nina. And uh, um, it's good to hear everyone. And I hope that we will have uh, more space to share afterwards. So I'll try to keep it short. Um, and uh, first of all, I want to start with seconding Nina and Eric for public sp speaking skills because probably from what I have seen, uh, it, it was one of the crucial um, factors that uh, influenced uh, organizational and um, individual plans implementation. And I will start from the from the ending actually, because uh, thanks to uh, being a part of this uh, research team, I was inspired to start traveling and seeing. Um, seeing my sisters from GCL. Uh, it was my dream for a long time, but uh, thanks to uh, coming back to the program after five years not being involved very actively, I got inspired that I finally have to start doing this. And I went to Vietnam, uh, where I uh, saw Hank from my badge, and to Cambodia, where I met um, uh, Chen from 2012 badge. And um, both of them were actually implementing public speaking uh, skills uh, as a tool for uh, implement, implementing their plans. Uh, for example, for Han, um, 
Uh, her plan uh, that was initially de de developed at Cody didn't work uh, because of the weather reasons that there was float that had taken away um, technical equipment from her social enterprise. So she just um, turned 180% degree um, other direction and she started a public speaking school. So actually these skills were crucial for starting up a new project. And for Chang, at the time when I was in Cambodia, she actually won a pitch uh, for a money prize and she could leave her uh, main job and start a platform for uh, um, um, employees and employers uh, in order to um, find jobs for people with uh, limited abilities or with special um, needs. Uh, so uh, these two cases are actually not included in the um, in the study. It's just my personal experience of going there and and seeing the things, and it uh, it can only uh, illustrate how difficult it is to do the really comprehensive uh, study of of the impact and influence of the program um, because um, Chang is uh, implementing impact what she have learned in 2012 now in 2019 and unless you go there and and see how it's uh, how it's uh, developing it's very difficult to describe or measure in numbers so um i would also want to say that this communication direct this is uh, direct communication with alumni was so valuable and uh, even though i have never met uh, chang in my life and i only could have this contact from uh, uh, eric thanks to being uh, now uh, a part of um, a research team still it was we spent four hours speaking just just straight away not even uh, needing time for introduction because gcl is already a good background that we share and we uh, didn't need time to get familiar with each other because we already knew that we share the uh, same values. So um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but uh, I think that um, this um, having your back, uh, having your back secured with the alumni network is a very important issue that uh, adds uh, confidence uh, to the community plan fulfillment and here here you can see the graph how actually it went because it's one thing uh, um, being there at Cody and planning uh, the theory and having the concepts and the beautiful models the other thing is coming back to this to your community and then, then trying to implement it that's why you can see that 17% uh, um, uh, no it's less it's uh, it, uh, only four people from what I remember from our survey answered that 100% uh, of their community plan had been fulfilled as they designed it. Um, the rest of the respondents had different level of uh, implementation. As, um, the majority said that they had implemented more than 50% of their community plans, organizational action plans. Um, and um, also approximately one third uh, said that they have changed the plan completely or they have implemented less than a half. And um, just to give you an idea, and I encourage everyone to read the full report, but the main topics that uh, are covered by uh, the organizational plans are mostly related to the women's empowerment uh, regarding to governance, social emancipation and economic empowerment. Also, it's local economic development. Um, um, many plans are dedicated to uh, or environment and sustain sustainable development. Um, lots of ladies are working with the vulnerable groups um, and also gender-based violence and sexual reproductive health are important issues for the um, community um, development plans. And also I want to mention uh, uh, main factors that hinder the 100% implementation uh, of the um, of their plans. Uh, so uh, first of all, is the um, I would name it underestimation of the reality or change in the reality uh, when um, graduates are coming back to the communities. It can be both unstable political environment or unsupportive 
uh, local stakeholders who are not ready to jump in and participate in the implementation. And also, uh, there are uh, factors as lack of funding, that it was not easy to find, find funding straight away, but as I just uh, illustrated it by a Cambodian example, five years later, this lady was able to find the funding and it was right timing for her and she had enough capacity to actually go ahead and start her plan. And also lack of support from family, from relatives, these personal issues also are very important uh, if, uh, if there is no, no one backing you straight, uh, straight away there. And that is why the mentorship was so important to the graduates and I will uh, continue with it later. And also there is one more reason why graduates sometimes change their plans or didn't implement it fully. It's because uh, um, they, they changed on the personal level and they uh, realized that their priorities at the moment had changed. That's why they went to study, they went to travel, they um, changed uh, something in their personal life. And uh, that is why it was not possible for them to continue as they uh, were planning it. But still, uh, this individual change was happening and it always takes time. So it's not easy to measure whether it's successful or not. But uh, this transformation is happening anyways. And um, we can see it from the responses that um, um, actually um, the the um, impact of the GCL is very satisfying to the graduates. Doesn't matter uh, is it um, is it influencing uh, their communities or is it uh, influencing their action plans or it's just a personal transformation. So in in any case, it's uh, it's being re uh, um, perceived as a success for them. And uh, with the next slide, you can see an example of um, uh, of how a graduate could actually um, switch uh, their plan. And uh, even though she uh, wanted to initially, the idea was to start a library uh, which would uh, support human rights defenders in her community. She understood that it is not possible because there is not enough support. Uh, from the community to start this library. So instead of doing this plan, she just um, she just uh, started on another project, which was more focused on women empowerment. Uh, and uh, in fact, it was different project, but at the same time, um, uh, at the same time, the main idea and the main goal was still there. Uh, and I see that I see that there are some comments uh, from you. Do you want to jump in? And um, if you don't mind, um, I will finish uh, um, because I'm almost there to finish um, with my part, and then we will provide uh, some room for you to jump in and comment on what I'm saying. So with uh, the next slide, you can see how uh, important it was. Um, for our graduates that the mentorship was there and I uh, can also say from the interviews um, with the mentors that we did that mentorship was um, very valuable not only for our graduates but also for mentors themselves because all of them mentioned that a mentorship was all about mutual learning and about intergenerational learning and it was very um, rewarding to hear that um, uh, the, the mentorship model works not only one way when um, um, more experienced professionals are sharing their expertise but also they are learning about what is happening um, in communities all over the globe and uh, they learn from younger generation as much as the younger generation is learning from, from them. Uh, I would not say, and we um, we have the numbers that you can see in the study, that mentorship was 100% uh, successful experience. Some mentees said that it was not um, totally relevant for them. Some mentors said that uh, it was not easy to find a good contact with the mentees, and uh, sometimes it was um, uh, connect, uh, connected to 
to just geographical uh, or time zone difference. It was not easy to physically or technically connect with each other. But we also have some very successful stories of mentorship when mentorship was actually um, uh, lasting even when the formal uh, few six months of mentorship were finished. Uh, the mentees and mentors are st still in touch and, and providing both professional and emotional, personal support uh, to each other. So we see that mentorship is a huge area where GCL is, um, has the potential to grow. And um, it's uh, also a wonderful tool how the community can be developed, uh, community of women leaders worldwide, because it's a cross-cultural, cross-sectoral, and cross-generational um, learning. And I want to sum up um, with the next slide, where you can see that when we asked our, um, our alumni, um, Overall, how, how did GCL strengthen um, uh, their contributions to development of women's empowerment? You can see 98% yes and 2% um, of uh, somewhat yes. There was no no. So it's, uh, this result is uh, amazing and almost impossible, I would say, for learning programs um, from my evaluation experience. But this is what we see, and even though sometimes it's not easy to measure the impact. Uh, actually, I'm very glad to see that Michaela just joined uh, the conversation. She's a professional evaluator and one of our mentors, and my mentor uh, as well. Uh, and uh, I know how difficult it is to measure projects uh, um, like that, not only with numbers and figures, but also to measure that transformation happening on the personal level and I think that um, this response confirms that no matter where was the transformation it was still a success which doesn't mean that there is no space for uh, improvement there is always space for improvement and we will continue with that I'll open up the floor for the comments and uh, questions I have seen yeah, I see that uh, Nina has has her hand raised would you like to share now and then we can go to uh, others. Yeah, um, just about the the mentorship because I don't know if you've if you've heard about um, some announcements lately about it, it's it's basically feminist mentorship like sister to sister mentorship. But then what we've also learned in our conversations with different mentors and and also different uh, GCL graduates that it takes a lot of effort to find the to find a good match between mentor and mentee and i think that's the, that's the struggle that um that everybody finds um at the start like we it's as though we are blindfolded whenever we we enter the mentorship um component of GCL because we don't know if it's going to work um or if it's going to work well to both mentors and mentees Another another thing that that was also raised by some mentors is that, or 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 some of those who had been part of GCL as coordinators of the course, was that when they when they tried to match a mentee to a mentor, they weren't really looking for um, common skills between them. Um, they are looking in terms of because because they said that if if one is is a writer, they're not going to look necessarily for for an older woman who is also a writer instead they will look for the common interests between the two women because they said that if it's just about the skills the skills can be found in other places but what is important is the emotional support that one that a mentor can give to a mentee and a lifelong support that would um that would definitely go beyond the, the gcl course plus the six months after that course. Thanks, Nina. I see uh, that uh, Estelina is uh, ready to speak a little bit. Uh, yes, um, thank you. Uh, I I'm glad to um, meet with you all um, speaking here at Uganda Matters University um, in Uganda. Um, I'd like to um, talk more of, about this mentorship. 
Um, recently, I met with a lady who has been uh, at a code, I think, who was at code in 19. In the 90s, uh, she saw me with a uh, code bag. I've been keeping it for a long time. Now she asked me, are you, did you go to code? I said, yes, I did. And, um, and, and so at, that is when the relationship started. So we started talking. We uh, a lot of things, and I realized we have a lot of things in common. But the problem is that we are far apart. And as I have already said, that I think this mentorship program really needs when we, there is that connectivity in our respective countries. What is this uh, one doing? Uh, what is this one doing? And like what Nina said, I think it is true. Um, that that uh, a common interest uh, matters a lot in uh, in uh, in mentorship, but that, that there is a, a, a gaps in some areas. I, I don't know a lot about other countries, but uh, in some countries, like I am speaking about Uganda, there is that gap, which where I think it is a little difficult to meet. So if we could uh, try to create that forum in our respective countries and know this, uh, these are uh, GS, uh, GCL leaders from um, around uh, within the country for all these years and we see how we can meet, strengthen each other, listen to each other and encourage each other. I think we can do a lot better. And the other thing is that uh, um, I, I think we could, shouldn't really mind about this is uh, maybe the and uh, all this been there for a long time because when I talked to this lady, I I got a lot of the, I didn't know and uh, and because I'm I'm basically working in environmental bio, uh, biodiversity conservation and working with women in environment. How can women uh, uh, um, contribute uh, in 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 the environment? So that is what I'm working on. But uh, she told me a lot of things. Though she isn't so much interested in in uh, in uh, biodiversity conservation, but she 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 told me the area of how to connect women. Uh, to help women, especially in rural areas. And, and I think really, uh, like uh, us in Uganda, if there are any Ugandans listening, surely I think we need to encourage each other. We need to make a forum where we can meet and, and, and share uh, and also learn from other African countries and uh, in, in our GCL uh, women leaders uh, in other respective countries to, to see how we can connect to each other because we are family. Like for me, logging into this uh, webinar, I'm coming back, and I'm really very happy for you to uh, uh, for having organized it. Thank you. I'm going to in really quickly uh, before passing it off to Naima, as I believe that she has some comments, and I'm just going to uh, kind of reiterate what what uh, Eileen has said, which is this is really good feedback, and you know, talking about connecting people. There's so much enthusiasm to connect and support one another's work, but it's been a it's been a tough uh, it's been tough to do for Cody, and it's a it's a key question that's on our minds, and uh, and hopefully with your help we can we can solve that challenge. Uh, Naima, I'll pass it off to you. Thank you very much, uh, Eric, uh, Nina, and Estelina. This is a great discussion around mentorship. Uh, and uh, I would like to um, reflect uh, some of the exercise that we, are, we do in the class uh, when uh, the participants are here. Um, I think Nargiza, uh, Zamira, uh, and Nina also can uh, contribute to that. So when the participants are here, uh, what we try to do is like exploring herself. She explores herself, herself and we um, actually help her to do that with, with uh, different tools and techniques. So uh, along with that, uh, they have um, uh, time to actually talk uh, with the facilitators, uh, particularly um, uh, separate times for each of them that we do uh, one -on one discussion where she uh, she try to talk about her herself her environment her uh, i mean uh, the hard work that she loved to do her challenges all those things um, so uh, with the discussion uh, this one-to-one -one is not for one time it's like uh, a kind of uh, 
check-in check -in process for the whole time she is here for this seven weeks. So after uh, all those things that we, um, uh, what uh, uh, being the lead, uh, what I do, uh, I summarize uh, in the, uh, the fact that uh, the person, what is the area that uh, the program and the mentorship, the, the mentorship can help uh, her. So based on those, actually, um, uh, we try to link her with the uh, with the person, with the women uh, leader who is successful in, in those areas that these uh, participants uh, have the trust to develop. So that is the groundwork is done here when they are on campus. Um, for seven weeks uh, and uh, uh, the other thing is it's not only uh, the connection with the mentors but also that uh, we uh, try to see how that mentorship program is working so um, after introducing mentor and mentee uh, start the relation um, uh, we we check in like after three months uh, how the uh, activities are going, how comfortable they are, and most of the cases that we get um, very good result. Uh, sometimes it's challenging uh, for them to really start the mentorship, but again uh, we see uh, that that trust is there, that commitment is there from mentees and mentors um, uh, in particular. And also after finishing the mentorship program, they submit uh, their uh, success stories. And these are all great stories, I would say. Uh, um, I mean, we feel so uh, great when we see that uh, how it worked. Uh, it's not only the two months, um, seven weeks program, it's also uh, the six months support that they get from the um, uh, mentors. The other thing that uh, I would mention that from the recent years, what we're tr uh, we are trying to do, we uh, try to find out the mentors from the previous GCLRs. So it's uh, it's like uh, connecting to uh, connecting a GCLR with another GCLRs where they can support each other. So it's more um, we when they are here that uh, the 101 and uh, conversation and exploring them to how she can be helpful for the other women. So the practice of helping attitude and uh, supporting other women uh, to um, uh, advance their leadership, uh, those exercises that we do, and also we support the GCLers to come uh, under the same umbrella of mentorship, the pool of mentorship. Uh, just to mention about this, um, what Estelina said about um, connection with uh, country-based alumni, this, um, I would say that this is going very well, well with regards to GCLRs. Uh, just uh, one example from latest um, uh, Women Manifesto Development from Malawi, where three of uh, the GCLRs were, were worked together, worked very closely with the women activists um, in the country to support the initiative of um, women uh, manifesto development. So uh, that is how uh, GCLRs are uh, connecting each other for their community development, for their policy work, and finally contribution for the advancement of women in their country uh, national level and with international connections too. Thank you very much, Eric. Over to you. Thanks. I'm going to leave it open. Uh, if anyone else has any reflections on uh, on mentorship or those connections, uh, please go ahead. Okay, I'm not seeing too much, so I'm going to uh, uh, thank you very much, Katarina, for for uh, that and for um, all of those contributions from the part, from the participants in the webinar. I'm going to head on into the final part of the uh, of the webinar and just speak a little bit about some of the overall uh, outcomes or impacts of, of the GCL program. So the image that you see up on screen is from a, a theory of change that was developed and, um, and speaks to uh, how we see change happening. So motivated individuals with knowledge and skills uh, will strengthen organizations, engage communities, and improve policy and social systems. Um, which in turn will uh, hopefully lead to more accountable democracies, inclusive economies, and resilient communities, and finally to equitable societies. So from the study, uh, we saw that the impact was multifaceted. Um, graduates are working uh, on a small scale to very large scales. It occurs in communities, organizations, and their various sectors, 
and it's often interlinked between between all three. Um, so in terms of organizational change, we saw alumna putting into practice topics taught such as gender mainstreaming, sexual harassment, redesigning gender sensitive projects, and training their staff and boards. We also saw new organizational strategies, expanding their audiences, new proposals and fundraising techniques, um, and then shifting organizations community work towards citizen participation, inclusion, women's rights and human rights. Um, in communities, some of the, the impacts that we saw were around mobilizing communities and engaging women in peace processes, training community members in gender issues, climate change, communication and media, and then also importantly, helping others discover their potential as leaders. Uh, and I think that was pretty key. It's clear that the graduates don't consider uh, leadership to be just individual leadership, but, um, but that leadership means raising other people up as well and, and helping others become leaders. Um, they're also working to change the attitudes of influential uh, traditional leaders towards issues affecting women, people with disabilities and other marginalized groups and convincing them to create greater opportunities for inclusion and equality. And then in terms of you know, sectoral or system-wide change, um, we've seen alumna contribute to national strategies for business incubation um, that include women in entrepreneurship, influencing local councils, and encouraging women to contest for political elections, creating political will at ministry levels through influence and advocacy, and working with large government departments to influence laws and policies. Um, and, you know, we really saw, I think, a ripple effect um, from one single graduate that then ripples out to the, the communities and networks around her. And, um, and it goes along with that, you know, leadership being lifting other people up and helping others become leaders. So there's a multiplier effect as they, as they go back and enact their organizational plans and, and, and uh, continue their work. And, I'm, and some of the things that contributed to that, I'm just going to look at four. So these four ingredients are, are some of the ones we found really, found that really support effective change leaders. Uh, and this happened both in, in the classroom and then also happened in uh, graduate stories as they go out to, to create social change. So grounding learning and reflections in lived experiences, uh, you know, transformative learning recognizes that self-awareness is the key to unlocking leadership potential. Reflective spaces uh, help people take stock of their strengths, um, challenges, their perceived agency and other resources. It also helps enable them to take control of their lives, set goals, and become social change agents. Um, two, celebrating and intentionally creating diversity through peer-to-peer -peer learning is really important. Being exposed to different cultures, personalities, fields of work, and attitudes can build acceptance of everyone's unique contributions, regardless of how different people are. Co-creation and opportunities to learn with and from others, particularly from different backgrounds, whether it's cultural, linguistic, socioeconomic, or professional, leads to a much deeper understanding of the issues facing women around the globe and, a, and a, an enhanced commitment to inclusion. Um, exploring and unpacking visible, hidden, and invisible power in different cultures and contexts is also really important. Uh, it helps foster dialogue and perspective sharing that leads to a broader understanding of leadership and effective strategies to make change happen. And then investing in those leadership skills, communication, negotiation, facilitation, and frameworks and theories that can inform practical action. Um, skills such as, and as mentioned earlier, skills like speaking and writing are not often taught but these investments can really help amplify a leader's voice and the voices of others to achieve larger scale change. Katerina, I see that your hand is up. Uh, yes, thanks. I would also like to add uh, the word resilience, which was uh, not mentioned here, but it was very important, uh, both on the individual level and on the uh, action plan level, because um, resilience is something we have been practicing, actually, not only 
uh, learning about it, but practicing during seven weeks um, at Cody. And uh, later on, it, uh, it was a very helpful concept uh, that um, was both um, valuable for personal strengths and also it it was very helpful when the reality was different from what we expected back at Cody and we were uh, able to adapt the plan to change the plan to uh, make few steps back in order to uh, make few steps forward later and uh, this resilience is uh, something which is not um, um, also measure, measurable or very clear in the program as a particular module, but it's this uh, red line that is that is cross-cutting the, the whole uh, GCL approach. And I think it's one of the key factors of success as well. Thanks, Kateri. And I think that's, uh, that's really important to unpack that. And thanks for raising that issue, because we did see that um, especially those 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 tools and techniques um, in the classroom and that focus and how it helped later on. Um, I see that Estelina would would like to share. Please go ahead. Yes, um, thank you very much uh, um, your, uh, for your discussion, Eric and Catalina. Uh, the, these reflections are very good, but there is something uh, um, especially about the the the, the unpack uh, unpacking the visible and invisible uh, powers. You know the problem with our own cultures in different uh, spaces in different in different countries. We have this uh, invisible power that uh, is very difficult, which is very difficult to penetrate. But uh, what I've uh, I have liked is that uh, what I've already just uh, uh, talked uh, about is uh, the, um, the the no the, the self awareness the self awareness and it's really very vital uh, when no one knows a woman knows who she is then it becomes easy to enter this space where uh, we can be able to, to lead and see uh, how we can um, we can uh, open up our, our, our the skills we already have um, uh, and also learn uh, for, for, from our communities yeah, but, but the problem is that um, um, I, I could talk about Maran community. The, pro, the problem of uh, there is this uh, um, uh, a political, um, I don't know whether they call it political, thing, but it, it's, it's coming a lot that sometimes um, the, 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 there is a problem between women leaders and, and men leaders because they feel that uh, uh, one to, to be a, pol a good political leader has to be a man or has to be a, one who has, uh, who has more influence in, uh, uh, with the, the, the elders in the community. And, and I think uh, and it's, it, I think with um, uh, this uh, creation of I mean uh, diversity, I think uh, with women linking to um, linking with each other and connecting to each other, it becomes very easy. So it's not one woman speaking, but there are several women who can really help one woman to come up and, and support each other so that they can, because I, I see women uh, having a lot of potential in, 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 in community development and international development. So the, 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 and in, in my own context, there is some small figure now, uh, how, how can a woman enter into the the political arena just beginning at the local level uh, because she's not supported she's alone so it becomes a little difficult to express her herself and, and her giftedness and also uh, uh, maybe learning other uh, other skills thank you thanks Estelina would anyone else like to uh, share the reflection what you mentioned uh, is is so important uh, I I can't remember if you were in the focus group where, where this was talked about, but there was one uh, alumna who said that in her community work, the women have really come together to, uh, to um, you know, even if they disagree a little bit on something, they'll still work together and, and vote together or raise their voices together because uh, otherwise they find they can't um, or it's more difficult to influence uh, decision making and it was a very strategic choice that they had made to to do that um, and uh, anyway it was an interesting strategy that she that had been mentioned I see Naima's hand is up um, 
please go ahead. Thank you, Eric. Um, uh, just a reflection from Estelina that uh, when we work uh, with the participants in the class, we found that it's, uh, the most difficult area is to reflection on personal uh, way of thinking, the thought process, who she is, how she is, how she behaves, how the attitudes uh, uh, towards, uh, towards uh, the community and the family and the relations. So exploring herself is the most challenging areas that we found that sometimes they struggle. Uh, many of them uh, become emotional when they try to explore themselves, that who she is. And there, actually, it helps them to see where she wants to go, what the vision is to talk about that, to think about that, and that explores the, uh, like, it's a huge potential that she can explore in herself. So that is uh, challenging, but uh, uh, I feel that uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a huge opportunity for a person to really learn and know about herself, who she is. So. Um, it's, uh, it's rewarding uh, the other way as well. So uh, we are we are continuously exploring the area that how we may make sure that the exploring herself, who she is, and self awareness is um, uh, we can we can make sure that people and the participants when they are here, they are comfortable to explore themselves to bring uh, uh, themselves also out of their comfort zone. So it's challenging, but it's uh, very interesting uh, uh, working uh, at that time with the participants. And uh, we are learning a lot from the class uh, through these ex uh, exercises. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for, for articulating that, Naima. Um, and I would just add to that and say that that's what we've found from some of our other studies as well, like the bigger learning from stories of change study found that that self-awareness is really, it, really key and unpacking that in yourself is, is hard, but it's really key to unlocking big potential for broader change and those, those impacts in organizations and societies and communities that we see. All right, so I'm going to uh, go quickly to our uh, recommendations as we're coming to the end of uh, end of an hour, hour and a half. Um, <clears throat> so we, from the study, we developed five key areas of recommendations uh, that deal with that have various thoughts on on what happens inside the classroom, uh, the leadership action plans, uh, mentorship, the leadership network. So how do we connect alumni? and uh, graduates, and then uh, some organizational recommendations as well, such as options for accrediting the program or using GCL as a model for other programs, which in fact is happening right now with the, uh, with, as we rethink our diploma program. Um, <clears throat> so this is my last slide. Uh, and then we'll just open it up to, to reflections and uh, discussions. Um, before I end, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone for coming today. Uh, and thank you to uh, Nina and Katerina for all of your contributions to the study, as well as the alumna, mentors, uh, resource people, current and former staff who all uh, opened up their minds and their hearts to uh, share their reflections and their thoughts on the GCL program. Um, before I, before we kick it into a more open discussion and, and further reflections, uh, Naima or Eileen, is there anything that you would like to share as we, as we finish up? Yes, uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, actually, uh, GCL is, uh, is uh, evolving uh, every, uh, and each year, I would say that the, the recommendation from the the previous group, the participants, we take uh, this uh, recommendation very seriously, uh, what we received through their evaluation. Uh, and uh, this, uh, what uh, the program started in 2012, but every year there are a lot of changes that we are building into that to make sure how practical we can make this program. So uh, the uh, uh, women leaders who started the, the programs, they 
um, contributed a lot. It's a dream project when I, I work closely with the GCL and I feel it's such a dream for any person to work uh, for this program that how this program can help not only the participants who are here, not only the graduates, the whole community, the women and others uh, who, who have different identities in the society community, how we can open the eyes, um, uh, we can help uh, to see the situation of the people who are around us. So, and that's where the program is like, we are taking uh, the learning from uh, each year and we try to adjust with uh, the recommendation as much as possible. And we appreciate um, the recommendation and uh, the suggestion from our alumni, our mentors. So that is not a kind of static thing. We, we try to make sure that it's well adjustable for all and it works well for all. So that's how we are working. So uh, for future, uh, any sort of uh, recommendation, suggestion uh, would be um, highly uh, appreciated from our side. Absolutely, Naima. And uh, yeah, any any further reflections and, and suggestions, we always take them really seriously. Uh, Eileen? Hey, first of all, I just want to say thank you everybody for taking part today in the session. It's really helpful for us to get this kind of feedback from you. And while I know there's a lot of people that were not able to join today, I think that the fact that we're going to have this as a recording and then post it should lead us to more conversation as well. So, um, a couple things I wanted to pick up on. First of all, I want to um, acknowledge and thank the people that started the GCL in the first place. Um, Mary Coyle was the director at the time of the uh, of the Cody Institute. She is now a senator um, in here in Canada and she really had the foresight to think about the creation of not just the GCL but also the International Center for Women's Leadership and made the GCL um, a cornerstone of that of the programming that we do. Um, and she along with the initial um, people that started the program, um, Dr. Linda Jones and Paulina Chola, Pauline and Linda still continue to be a, play a role in the program by also offering themselves as mentors. So if it hadn't been for them starting this program out, we wouldn't be where we are today. And then there's other wonderful women along the way that have played a role. There's so many of them, but I'll point out in two, two in particular, and that's Nancy Lee, um, as well as Stella Maranga, who have both um, have been Cody staff. Cody Associates and continue to offer their support to the program. And then of course we now have our own Cody team here as well working on the program including Naima who leads um, and Robin and you know Brianne and others all play a role um, in making it a success. For me the big challenge and opportunity is for us to go deeper on what do we mean by mentorship. Um, and is that mentorship um, in terms of the kind of support that you've been talking about? Or is it mentorship in terms of coaching around particular areas of focus? Or is it sponsoring and championing somebody to make sure that they also get an opportunity um, to connect to other people? And so I think mentorship, we need to spend more time really understanding what we want to do with that. And that'll be a big focus. I also hear quite clearly how important the communications element of the program is and you know some people call these things soft skills to me they're not soft at all these are skills that are essential and they need to be um, paid attention to and in order for you to find voice and to really elevate your voice and help others elevate their voices communication is so key so these are the things that I think we will uh, will end up you know spending more time kind of discussing as a team about how we can best support it both within the GCL but also outside not everything has to be fit into the GCL model but this is a good start finally um, keep an eye on what we're doing next because you know you know as well as everybody else that um, through the Cody Women Leaders Network and through hopefully the Cody Connects platform we're always trying to create new opportunities and um, next year is a big year um, in, in, in the women's rights field. It's Beijing plus 25. It's the anniversary of the Beijing uh, Conference for Women. 
And I think we have an opportunity to think collectively about what kind of impact we want to have on this year coming up that can then lead us into the next 25 years of, of fighting for gender equality. So lots of good feedback today and I thank you all and I think especially Eric and Katerina and Nina for their hard work on this study. So thank you. Well, thank you all so much. Um, would anyone else like to uh, share their final thoughts before we uh, close for the day? I'm so sorry I'm going in and out because I'm actually in a hibernation room because this is where I can get some um, energy from our solar um, energy system. Um, I think uh, so something that that I think that is worth continuing for for Cody is is to keep this platform open and to improve this platform of communications because there's really a great feeling that we get whenever we reconnect with other alumni whether they come from our own batches or 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 they come from other batches because it renews the energy that we got from the classroom and that is the feeling that we also experienced when we were holding the focus group discussion and i remember what pauline ochola ochola said um that, uh, she was describing the the batch the earlier batches that at the time they were really desperate in finding a good tech uh, communications platform but um, I think in 2014, 2015, the only ones which were available were either having a website and having a chat group in that website, or even though Facebook was already there, not everybody was on Facebook and not everybody had access to the internet. So I am hopeful personally that maybe in a year's time, in two years time, um, let's just continue this platform because things will change in terms of technology and in terms of the platforms out there, making these platforms being more accessible to people. And maybe someday we will, we will have another conversation like this with less technical glitches and, <laughs> and maybe make the conversations even deeper or even longer. Um, without without having all the inconveniences that we tend to experience every time we try this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Nina. Um, anyone else? Katerina? Yes, thank you. I would also like to share that uh, this study was indeed a participatory study. We would not be able to produce this kind of report uh, um, unless every everyone had uh, contributed their time and efforts to share uh, their own experience uh, from GCL, because of course we can have numbers from um, from the surveys, but it's always interesting to do the in-depth interviews of focus groups and see how um, people are mirroring each other, and on this uh, mirroring and in intersection uh, we could actually feel and see how uh, strong the community is and uh, um, mm, how much uh, the approaches are still there that uh, that were theory back then when people were participating or, or um, had been involved as, as a staff but uh, what we could observe from these focus groups and interviews that it's more than just uh, approaches it's a lifestyle it's a mindset and it was very valuable uh, to see this as a confirmation and to have this uh, participatory study uh, where we could include so many quotations and uh, um, evidence based on what you shared with us. And thank, thanks for that. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, feel